Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new announcement coming from a very interesting experiment that suggests something unusual may have been detected and that something may have also been the mysterious dark matter. So let's talk a little bit more about the experiment and what was found and welcome to What The Math. So over the last few weeks there were quite a lot of different news coming about this experiment, but most of the headlines were basically suggesting that we did discover dark matter after all. And more specifically, the claim was that the scientists were able to see the mysterious axions, the mysterious particle that's supposed to explain the existence of dark matter and also solve a very unusual phenomenon in physics that still hasn't really been explained. But all of these topics are actually really complex, like super complex. So it took me a while to try to figure out the best way to explain all of this. And I figured the best way to start is, well, let's actually just talk about the experiment first. It's called Xenon-1T. And it's actually uh, one of the more advanced versions of the original Xenon experiment that's essentially trying to discover all of these mysterious particles that are very difficult to detect, such as particles that could be responsible for the mysterious dark matter. The way it works is, by using a relatively large tank filled with xenon, specifically large amounts of liquid xenon, that usually doesn't interact with anything. And in this case, over the years, the actual tank has been increasing in size, to the point where now, we have a tank that's able to hold over 3 million tons of xenon on the inside. At the same time, this tank is placed somewhere really really deep in the ground where it's protected from all sorts of interference, and it also contains a lot of very sensitive sensors on the top and usually on the bottom as well. And so what this allows the scientists to do is to basically be able to detect really minute interactions, even like a single particle passing through this tank, in this case right here, would then be producing enough interaction with xenon that it would then be detected by these really sensitive sensors, which would then be able to create a three-dimensional picture of where this particle passed through. And because this detector is so sensitive and because it's able to pretty much detect absolutely everything, it's always very hard to actually protect us from unneeded interference. Like for example, from interaction with particles that we're not really looking for and that we already know a lot about. And so over the years, the scientists have created a kind of a baseline for what they expect to discover in these experiments based on the particles we already know about. So anything over this limit, over the expected values, will obviously create a lot of questions. And in this particular case, the scientists expected, theoretically, to discover about 232 interactions in the xenon detector over the period of its activity. The thing is, when they actually looked at the data and when they started to calculate how many different events were discovered, they realized that there were more, 53 more to be exact. And in this case, what they were actually seeing had the energy equivalent to several different concepts that were previously theoretical, including these so-called solar axions, which have previously been also used as a kind of explanation to the mysterious dark matter. So this is where things kind of get a little bit more complicated, because first of all, what exactly is an axion? So a few decades ago, when studying the concept of symmetry in the universe, or basically that everything for the most part seems to be symmetric everywhere, the particle physicists realized that when it comes to the actual subatomic particles and subatomic forces, the so-called strong force should technically be not symmetric. Now, it's a very difficult concept to explain in a single video, but the idea here is that mathematically and physically, it's more beneficial for different subatomic particles to not really have this symmetry going on. But the thing is, we don't really see it. When it comes to the strongest force, for example, the so-called strong force that holds protons and neutrons together, it really should not be symmetrical at all. And if it's not symmetrical, we should be observing a lot of other effects in the universe that we're not seeing, such as, for example, the neutrons should have magnetic charge, which they don't. But that's a really, really simple explanation here. And if you want more detail, you can check out the PBS video that should be linked somewhere in the description. The explanation there is a little bit more thorough, but also a little bit more complex. Now, axions, the mysterious particles that we've never been able to detect, would totally explain all of this away. The existence of mysterious axions would explain how subatomic particles and subatomic forces are able to maintain this symmetry and would actually explain how everything kind of works together. The problem here is that we've never been able to see these axions, we've never been able to detect them. And that's actually by their design. 
A typical axion would have no electric charge, it would have an extremely small mass, it would barely interact with anything at all, but according to the theories of axions, they would all be produced, for the most part, during the early existence of the universe during the Big Bang. And there would be so many of them produced that they could easily explain the effects of dark matter we're seeing around the universe. So even though they don't interact with anything, their actual sheer numbers would be more than enough to explain the actual dark matter we're seeing around the universe. While at the same time, they also take care of the so-called CP symmetry, or the symmetry of the strong force, which has not really been explained just yet. So in other words, these axions would take care of two problems. And because of that, back in the days, one of the scientists decided to propose the name axion, which was also a name for a detergent, which basically cleans your clothes. So in that sense, because it clears up so many problems, one of the scientists thought that this is a perfect name for this subatomic particle. But because we've never actually seen them, we've only had a few proposals for different experiments to try to detect these axions. One of the more interesting experiments that tried to discover axions was actually by using their very interesting property, where an axion can turn into a photon and then back to axion if a magnetic field is applied to it. The wonderful person by the name of Axel Lindner created this illustration that shows you how this works. Essentially, if you were to shine a light onto a typical wall with electromagnetic force applied right here in front of the light, we expect some of these light particles to turn into axions and to essentially pass through the wall. And then if on the other side you do the same thing and now use the electromagnetic field to try to turn the axions into light, you should technically be able to detect some of the light coming through the wall. In other words, by design, axions should allow light to pass through walls and we should be able to see things coming through walls all the time. But the thing is, we don't see that and a lot of these experiments so far have failed. And mostly because we think that it's just very, very difficult for axions to interact with matter, even when we try to force them to interact with that matter. And so the experiments so far have not really been that successful. But one of the experiments expected to find axions using the xenon detector I previously mentioned. And specifically because we also expect the biggest light producer near us, our sun, to produce lots and lots of these axions, and a lot of them should be passing through Earth right now as I'm speaking. Essentially, we expect axions that are created inside the sun, because it has a lot of magnetic field and it has a lot of photons, to eventually be detected here on Earth if we wait long enough and if we use a sensitive enough detector. And because Xenon-1T detector did have these unusual 52 events that cannot be explained in any other way right now, that's why some scientists claim that maybe this is what we're seeing. Maybe we actually finally found axions coming from the sun. But right now we do need to have further investigations because there are two more alternative propositions. One of the possible explanations is that there is a slight chance the tank may have been contaminated with an isotope of hydrogen known as tritium. Even a single atom of tritium would actually produce very similar effects that we observed in this particular experiment. The other explanation involves the mysterious neutrinos and the idea that maybe we just don't understand neutrinos very well. Neutrinos can also pass through the xenon detector because they normally don't interact with matter as well as other particles, and so if they actually have slightly different properties from what we initially thought, maybe that's their fault, maybe they were responsible for these unusual detections. But nevertheless, the best explanation right now, the most likely explanation at least, are the axions. They have the highest chance of being responsible for what the scientists observed in the xenon tank, and the only possible source for these axions would be our sun. So technically we refer to these as the solar axions. But does this mean that we finally found the mysterious dark matter and we finally know what it is? Well, not just yet. The Xenon experiment still has at least one more upgrade to go through, and this will allow us to kind of really narrow down what we've found here and what's basically causing these unusual observations. Once we can identify exactly what caused these observations, we'll be able to tell for sure if what we just saw was dark matter. But as of right now, as of 2020, this has been the best chance for us to discover the mysterious dark matter and if axions have indeed been discovered just now, this would clear up a huge amount of problems for the particle physics and would allow us to understand the universe in a lot more detail as well. Right now, we sort of depend on the axion existence for essentially understanding the universe, and without their existence, things get a little bit more complicated. But anyway, whether this was the signs of dark matter or something completely different, 
there are still going to be more investigations about these particular detections and they will definitely lead to something exciting in the future. And once we learn what it is, I am definitely coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Alternatively, you can also support this channel on Patreon, and it does help me quite a lot. And maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.